Hi, I'm Chef Lynn. Welcome to the Flavor Secrets Kitchen and welcome back to Ruben Griffin of Naya Catering. NYA, not your average catering. That's correct. We were so excited with the dishes that he made last time, we invited him back to do six really interesting, healthy appetizers for you. And for one of them, we need some risotto, so I'm going to be over here on the side making some risotto for you. I did a whole section on this once that you can go back and watch, but just as a quick reminder, it has some onion in it, and then the rice, a little bit of saffron, a little bit of wine, about this much. And then I'm just adding a ladle of chicken broth each time it dries out. And when it's finished, I'll put that much Parmesan in, a little cup of Parmesan, and a couple of tablespoons of butter. And Reuben will tell you how we're going to use this in his appetizer as we go on. So Reuben, what's the first one? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a Jamaican jerk uh, guacamole on plantain chips. So uh, basically Jamaican jerk, uh, you've got high spice, sweetness from fruit, uh, uh, the jerk marinade that we have is a, a mixture of cooked uh, allspice, which is traditional in Jamaican jerk uh, uh, food, and then uh, <clears throat> habaneros. So what we're going to do is just quite simply uh, make a guacamole, which is a very basic and easy dish to make with just a little twist. So we're going to core out these avocados. And it's real easy. Uh, you want to be gentle with it, so that way you don't run your knife all the way through, obviously. But you can just do it like this. And then uh, you'll use a spoon to scoop it right out. Then you can just mash it up with a fork. This is a nice, easy way to dice avocado. You need those fancy kitchen gadgets they make for slicing avocado? Uh, I don't use a lot of fancy gadgets for much. I, I don't even use a lot of uh, different knives. I tend to use a chef knife for almost everything. Me too. I have, I think, probably 20 knives and I bet I use two. So now it's all nice and neatly diced. You can see how good it comes out of there. Wow, that's great. Got that one. You can throw those in here if you want. Or are we using that onion? Guess no. we're using that onion. That's just extra. Okay. Uh -huh. I've made they made the mistake once of setting this on a hot a hot burner. It's a little bit hot there. I'll hold it. There you go. But you're a garbage girl, trash girl. You just keep it filled with water. <laughs> it won't melt. Oh. That's what somebody told me once. I don't know if I, I want to really believe that. I don't know if that works. That. <laughs> I don't think I want to believe that. Well, that's that old camping trick where you can uh, boil water in a plastic container, oh, essentially. Really? To heat water up over on a campfire. Fire? Hmm. Yeah, I've never done it myself, but I'm sure Bear, Bear Grylls or one of those guys would uh, know what to do. <laughs> so we've got the diced avocado, uh, diced pineapple. That way, you know, it's going to add a little bit of sweetness to the dish because you're going to have uh, heat as well. Uh, finely diced or brunoise red onion, chopped up cilantro. I did that. The Jamaican jerk marinade, which is going to add a lot of heat. Like I said, it's habanero and allspice is your main ingredients in Jamaican jerk. So how did you go over how you made the Jamaican jerk? That's actually, a, 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 I bought that product. It's, okay. it's just a really nice product uh, this time of the year, uh, not being able to get your hands on hot uh, scotch bonnets, fresh scotch bonnets or habaneros. Uh, so it's a, it's a jarred container, but it's, it's, it's a great item and is it's got a, a lot of heat. Is there a brand you like? Or? Um, it's right over here. This is this nice uh, brand I picked up. It's got a lot of heat to it. It's. Uh, just a good Jamaican. Walker's Wood Spicy Jerk Marinade. And you shop at Holiday Market a lot, right? I do. I shop at Holiday Market a lot. They, they tend have to have just about anything and everything you need. So So now you're... What we're doing is we're zesting uh, the lime, so that way you're going to get a lot of those essential oils off of the lime and get a lot of that lime flavor without overly saturating the dish with liquid. And this is a, a real fine micro cleaner that he's using. Yep. You can also use any kind of a grater like the fine side of a box grater works really well too. 
Okay, and why are you rolling that? Uh, it helps break up the, the lime uh, and the uh, <coughs> fibers be, inside of it. You have to be strong to be a chef. It was, it was a very hard lime to begin with, so it's gonna be very difficult to squeeze if it's uh, that hard. And we're using the little strainer to catch the seeds. Another you thing can use like a fork to do that if you a want. A fork. Uh, there's tools called reamers, but it just oh, helps I to, that out. I have everything. to break up the dish. Like I said, I, I tend to use just uh, my tool as much as possible. My one handy tool, which is my chef knife. A little bit, a little bit of sea salt. salt, and now we will mash and mix. No pepper. Uh, not so much in this. I mean, you've got that. Uh, the habanero in the uh, jerk marinade, so you don't need a whole lot of pepper in with this dish. Mm -hmm. This will be a, a chunkier style guacamole, not necessarily as creamy. If you wanted to cream it out a little bit, you could very easily take a, a blender or a immersion blender or any kind of food processor and put uh, half of this in that dish uh, and blend it up so it's nice and smooth and creamy and then just fold this back in. I kind of like the idea of just doing it with the fork because when I eat, I like to feel texture. Absolutely. So we've got that, nice and made. Then I've got the plantain chips right behind us. We weren't able to get our hands on plantain chips, so what we did was uh, use a little bit of banana. It's not gonna necessarily work the same way. Plantains are recommended for this due to the fact of their high starch content. So they fry up uh, just like a potato chip. But they actually kind of curl a little bit more and make a little bit of a cup. Absolutely. Right? I, I, if you keep the so. skin on, that's the important part of making the cup too. Uh, you keep the skin on with the plantain and when you fry it, uh, the skin has a lot more extra moisture in it and it curls around and just makes a nice little perfect cup that holds the food into it. And you fried it in. Fry this in olive oil, but you can use canola oil, blended oil. I like to use uh, grapeseed oil a lot. It's got a high smoke point, like peanut oil, uh, to keep it uh, very uh, <clears throat> close and keep it kind of uh, geologically uh, uh, the same. You could use coconut oil as well, which would impart some great flavor. Yeah, coconut oil is getting really popular now. It's a, it's Even a nice it's dish. such a saturated fat. I don't know, I don't like to use it. Scares me. Are you worried about that or not? Uh, I'm not too worried about the, the saturated fat. I I uh, I tend to eat a lot of, of food, a little bit of everything, and uh, kind of like uh, my dad used to always tell me, uh, everything in moderation. So. Right, that's true. Okay, and what are you garnishing here? This is just a beautiful. nice little uh, pickled red onion. So it's uh, the way I pickle onions, and the nice I like pickled onions. You can use them a lot. So uh, you just shave them nice and thin. Uh, then you bring to boil uh, three cups of red wine vinegar, one cup of sugar, and a little bit of pickling spice. And once it comes up to a boil, you strain out the spice. So that would be for how many onions? Uh, that is four onions. Four red onions. Four right. red onions. And notice how he's using a contrasting color for the garnish to make it really pretty. It's an amazing addition, makes it beautiful. Absolutely, makes okay. the dish pop. So to eat this, you just pick it up with your fingers? Absolutely. And then? Enjoy. All right, All right. or you could, I would. I think I would serve that one maybe with a fork. You could. because I it like my rugs. It tends to be rugs. a little, little messier, but once you had the plantain chip, it would really contain itself pretty well. I see, it's better. And okay. so we would, we would do it a little too. smaller chips too, we'd do straight rounds. Okay, great, let's move on to the second. All right. ready for our second appetizer, which is? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a curried crab salad on what I call our watermelon popsicles. So we've uh, got popsicle sticks here, uh, little nice cubes of uh, watermelon. Let me slip those sticks right into the watermelon. You know, I've had those popsicle sticks since my kids were little. Oh yeah? Where would you buy popsicle sticks? I don't even know. So. Uh, you can buy them at uh, medical stores, I mean medical supply stores you can get them. Uh, cake decorating Cake decorating stores? shops. Like Heinrich's uh, at 10 Mile and Van Dyke, I think it is? Absolutely. And then uh, there's also all sorts of 
other types of skewers that you can use for it. So we often use, uh, we get these like bamboo forks that you can oh, kind cool. of buy. That would be cool. Uh, an just adult, any, more anything, of an adult. anything that uh, you can skewer something with that actually has a little bit of that size or shape Solid. to it that you can pick something up and it's not just going to spin. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. Right. Absolutely. Right Last thing you want to do is. Rug. Yeah. Let's do that and drop it right onto there. So what we're going to do, then we're going to add some crab meat. What we have here is a little bit of mayonnaise. Like a cup? About a cup? About a cup of crab meat. Cup of mayonnaise? Uh, about half a cup, three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. Uh, we've got a little bit of curry mm -hmm. seasoning right here. Curry, that's ground curry. That is ground curry. So that way you're going to get a little bit of uh, heat and color. You're going to want that with teaspoon? two, teaspoons. Uh, two teaspoons. Okay. Don't worry about the amounts because I'll put all of these appetizers on my blog, cheflynmiller.wordpress.com, so you can go find them afterward. And then a little bit of chopped Woo, chive really... for color because you're going to want a little a bit of color smell. in with it, not to mention that uh, nice uh, flavor that you get from that, the little nice fresh chopped chive flavor. Now, can you make these ahead and keep them in the refrigerator? And Absolutely. Then just pop them out. Mm -hmm. So you serve them cold, obviously. Because Absolutely. Of the yeah, this is a cold dish. All right, a couple of tablespoons maybe of chai. Yep. And for this dish, what you actually want to do is you want to season the watermelon. Ooh, cool. So. A little bit of salt tends to bring out uh, sweetness in dishes, believe it or not. So you put a little bit of salt on the watermelon, especially this time of the year. Come summertime, it won't be as necessary. So you could use sea salt or you could use kosher salt or would you use mountain? You could. You could use, I mean, whatever salt is your preference. You know, I always, always take these dishes that I make. And, uh, you know, tweak everything to, to what you like. I mean, obviously try it first uh, my way and then experiment. I mean, cooking is all about experimenting. Mm -hmm. There are no real rules necessarily in cooking that, I mean, there are, there are rules to follow, that. but there are not rules that you need to always go to. You know, don't listen to somebody that says, you can't do a dish this way, because that's not true. That's how dishes are made. This is for the next appetizer, but why don't you talk about this just for a second so I can put it in the oven. So that right. is, uh, this is going to be for a prosciutto cups that we're going to do a minted uh, ginger melon in. Mm, so we basically just took prosciutto and wrapped it around that pan. And prosciutto uh, is an Italian? Uh, an Italian ham, shaved super thin. Uh, you, can only, you should actually be able to read through it, it's, it's cut so thin. Read through it. Yep. That's amazing. And so he just wrapped the bigger pieces around here and used the smaller pieces to patch. Yep. And then okay. you throw it in the oven about 200 and, uh, 375 degrees for about uh, 12 minutes roughly until it's, it's crisp and done essentially. And then uh, pull it out, let it rest, and then you can pull them right off of those dishes and uh, it'll be a nice little, nice little appetizer. So you're putting the curried salad right on the watermelon. That's interesting. Yum. That's a very unusual taste. Curry and melon? Mm-hmm. It, it actually works very well. It's one of those little pleasant surprises. So you're going to eat this sideways, I take it. <laughs> Only if you Make want sure you to wear it on people. the floor. <laughs> uh, and then I just take a little bit of uh, finely shaved serrano chili. Serrano chili. Could you use different kind of chili? You could. You could use whatever kind you want. I wanted to use a, a, a green hot chili, uh, okay. mainly for color. Mm -hmm. I chose the, the serrano. And notice he cut that on an angle because it looks prettier. So, like I said, you're going to have sweet, cool spice. Heat, just a nice little uh, flavor selection right there. Interesting. Love it. Super simple, really easy, fast dish to do. 
but it packs a lot of flavor and it's a good conversation dish. Yeah, no kidding. Very good conversation dish. Remember all those things he said, sweet, salt, sweet, salty, Absolutely. spicy, etc. Spicy, you wanna, you wanna always have a good contrast of flavors. So the next dish we're gonna do is uh, cauliflower cheddar cakes. So we talked about uh, this last time, uh, what to do with leftover cauliflower. And what we did is we boiled this cauliflower for 10 minutes in salt, slightly salted water. Uh, that way, and then you, you wanna make sure you drain it properly. Uh, then you're just gonna mix it up. Uh, then we add two eggs. One cup of panko. Half a cup of shredded cheddar. Right in front of you. I moved it. <laughs> I'm just trying to trick you. Gonna have a little bit of cayenne in there and a touch of nutmeg. And this is this is a great trick to get your little kids to eat cauliflower. Because I tell my son that these are just cheddar cakes. I don't mention the cauliflower in there because uh, what he doesn't know in this instance will not hurt him. All right, so we take we're that. We're hoping he won't notice. Here's your cayenne and your nutmeg. I have to show this great little, my little nutmeg gra grater. I just love it. You just hold it by the bottom and turn it around. How much do you want? It doesn't usually come off in your hand. Just a but dash. It's kind of hard to, and is that, enough? that should be perfect. Isn't that awesome? I love it. So we've got that nice and mixed up. Lynn, will you get uh, a pan hot for us with a little bit of olive oil in there? So we're just going to mix in that spice a little bit better. And this is a dish you can make. You can make the uh, cakes ahead of time. You can make this mi mix a day ahead of time if you like too. Uh, and then if you want to pan fry them off so you're not busy during, uh, during your party while you're entertaining your guests, you can just pan fry them off and put them on sheet trays and then just warm them back up. I like that idea. Anything I can make ahead, I do. I think that's the biggest thing I learned in cooking school was all you can do ahead. It makes my life so much simpler. So these are going to have a, a fun little texture, but the egg and the panko together are going to help bind it up really well. They're going to feel a little bit mushy, but what you're going to do is, is they'll cook, and when they cook, they do firm up. You want to put, oh, you don't, the panko's in there already? Yep. Oh, I missed that. Yep, Oops. you just, you add it all I together. I thought you were going to put it on the no, no, you actually need the panko in here to help bind it together. The two eggs by themselves is just not quite enough. Okay. It's a little bit messy, but it's fun to do. So it might be a good one to have him help with, except Absolutely. putting, maybe not putting it in the hot oil, but. No, I, and like I said, I, I tend to, when I do these, I, I patty these up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll cook them off on site and then get them in the oven to finish them off. All right, that's good. And these will cook till they're brown? Yep. Maybe three or four minutes? Approximately, yeah, three or four minutes on each side. And then we have a nice little saffron aioli and uh, some fresh uh, herbs to garnish it with at the end. So. Do you, are you going to make the aioli? Uh, no, no, I made the aioli ahead of time. So essentially, it's right here in a bottle. Uh, bloomed up some saffron in uh, some, some uh, cider vinegar. So basically you just put some saffron threads and cider vinegar, keep it over the heat. If you're baking all day that day, you can kind of keep it in a metal bowl towards the back of your oven, let the residual heat uh, warm it up, uh, and then make an aioli, which is essentially uh, <clears throat> yolks, uh, egg yolks, some whites if you like, uh, Dijon mustard, uh, and vinegar, and a little bit of sugar. Or you could cheat and use mayonnaise. You could, you could cheat and use mayonnaise <laughs> and just mix that in. Uh, uh, add a little bit of honey into that mayonnaise to allow it to uh, sweeten up and balance out the, the acidity of it. Mm -hmm. 
or you could use the, the Forbidden Miracle Whip, which is Miracle a little Whip. sweeter. I like Miracle Whip myself too, so <laughs> that's what I use on my sandwiches. Okay, so we're just going to flip it over and brown it. And then we'll show you how to garnish that in a minute. Here's our third appetizer all plated up. You want to tell us how you garnish that? So we just did a little squirt of uh, saffron aioli on top of it. It's uh, the aioli we talked about earlier. And then just a nice little uh, baton of chive, just to give you some color and a baton touch of flavor. Baton of chive. <laughs> Makes it <laughs> sound sexy, chive. right? Yeah, chive yeah, sticks. Yeah, I like that. So Ready. next we've got Good. these uh, bacon wrapped pineapple and scallop skewers. So I cut the bacon into roughly halves, uh, pounded it out a little bit with my hand just to kind of break it up a little bit. See, to your point earlier, you don't even need a meat cleaver. No, <laughs> not. You can also use a wine bottle. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> uh, and then give it a nice little wrap. Pull it all the way around. And so that is your, your salt and sweet component right there. Now we didn't do this, but if you're going to put skewers, if you're going to put them on the grill, you should soak those in water for an hour before you do it. Absolutely. And in the oven they seem to be okay. In the oven, yeah, it's, it's just the direct heat of the grill that is going to affect it because they will uh, definitely burn. And uh, that's it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> burn is not good. No. Wrong color, wrong flavor. <laughs> hard to get those on there. Now is this one you would serve on the skewer or would you serve, I would this, serve it, it off on and the, put it on the plate? I would plate? serve it on the skewer oftentimes still. I mean if you still want to do a, you wanted to put it on a plate you very well could. It really depends on, on the party itself. If you're doing more of a past cocktail hors mm -hmm. d'oeuvre type of party you would want to keep it on the skewer but if you're going to put it on plates and people can walk around and mm -hmm. enjoy it with some flatware then uh, absolutely take it off of the skewer. Okay, that looks great. Now we're gonna put this in a 375 oven? 375 oven for about uh, 15, 20 minutes. 15 or 20 minutes, and yeah. it's done, right? Okay, I'll take that. There you are. All right. All right, so this is the uh, melon dish that we were talking about that we're gonna finish up. So those are those cups that we put onto the muffin tins. So you can see kind of how they've retained their shape. Uh, Firm, they're gonna really translate into uh, giving you a good serving dish. That's a really fun cup. Yeah, it's nice. It works out really well. Would you serve that standing up? No. Probably. No, I would not. That no. would be more of a seated dish. So you would cut it with a knife and a fork. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless it's a, a room full of dudes like me that could fit that whole thing in their mouth at once. <laughs> Chomp. So we've got chiffonade delicious. mint. Uh, cantaloupe. Chiffonade mint is where you roll the leaf and then you just chop it into little slices and then you get that really beautiful thing called chiffonade. So you got cantaloupe and honeydew melon cantaloupe chopped and honeydew, up. Cantaloupe and honeydew, yep. Yeah. Nice dice on that. Some cracked black pepper to texture, color, spice all in once. I use a mixed pepper that I like really well. It's a Lowry's brand. I think it's just Lowry's or McCormick. I can't remember. You'll have to look. They even have it at Kroger or any grocery store, and it's red, white, and green all mixed together. And this is a ginger simple syrup. So what I did is I took a ginger root, peeled it, minced it up, mixed it with uh, one cup of sugar and one cup of water, brought that to a boil. So you approximately had a cup of all three items. And then... Uh, Mix it around, brought it up to a boil and let it cool. Just do a touch of salt in here to help highlight everything. You don't want to do too much because you do have salt with the prosciutto. And you're just going to mix it up. I didn't give you very big bowls to work it's with okay. there. <laughs> Got a glove on. We want to make it as hard as we can. Is that spoon okay? You want a little bigger one? That yeah, works fine. Oh, is that gorgeous? Delicious. There's nothing that tastes better than melon and prosciutto. Yeah, it's a very, a very classic Italian prosciutto. dish. Uh, antipasto, melon wrapped in prosciutto, baked, cold, just as a nice little salad. And how far ahead can you load those up? Uh, you can load those up way ahead of time. And in fact, I would make your melon a day ahead of time if you, if you actually could because that will allow the simple syrup, the ginger, the pepper, everything to infuse very well. 
and you can set those up an hour ahead of time very easily. Great. I'd like to see that on the side of a plate with a big steak. Here we are. Sounds good. Now, okay. last but not least, is our risotto cakes or balls, however you like to do them. We're going to do more of a cake for this one. We already did four of them ahead of time. So we'll get these in the pan while I show you how we make the cake. So the oil's been heating here on low while we did the last dish. So it'll be nice and hot when he puts those in. Hopefully we'll hear, hear a nice sizzle. Nope. <laughs> so much for that. A little better heat on oh, you've got it on, you've got it turned down oh. low. Yeah. There you go. That's right. So we'll get those three working off, and then I'll actually show you how we breaded these. So your standard three-step breading process. So ahead of time, what I did was I flattened out the uh, risotto cake, stuffed it with a little bit of uh, uh, fontina cheese, then you patty them out. And the fontina cheese was grated, yeah, so which I me... found interesting. I usually put a cube in the middle, so you get a kind of a crunch of cheese, but I think it's a great idea to use, the, to use it grated, then you're sure that it'll melt. Absolutely. Right? So I flour them, egg wash, and you want to make sure that the egg is completely coating the, the cake itself, and then you go into the panko. You want to make sure that uh, you're using separate hands. One hand's a wet hand, one hand's a dry hand. Especially when you're wet, doing a lot. Dry, wet hand, dry hand method. Yep. Even. <laughs> All right, so that's how you make these. We're just gonna brown these up and then we'll take a look at how Ruben plates them all. So here are six to die for appetizers that you can wow your friends with. Ruben, you wanna run us through them? All right, so once again, we have the uh, melon, ginger, and mint salad in the prosciutto cups. And garnished with a little... A little bit of chiffonade mint in there. We've got the Jamaican jerk guacamole on the plantain chips with a little pickled uh, red onion. We've got the uh, curried crab watermelon popsicles. We've got the uh, bacon wrapped pineapple with the uh, scallop skewers. The cheddar cauliflower cakes with the saffron aioli. Mm. And the sweet pea and saffron risotto cakes with a little marinara sauce. So we just added some frozen peas. We didn't mention that, right? Yeah, we into added the, frozen into peas the into the risotto that you were making that earlier. I made. And the marinara sauce is by yep. Seasons Harvest. So, thank you so much for coming again and thank you for all these great oh, recipe ideas. It was much. wonderful. I can't wait to make them all. I'm sure I will. Um, thank you, Ruben Griffin of NYA Catering. I'm Chef Lynn. Enjoy.